On today's show, FCA gives Reed Bigland a big promotion, Maserati cancels the gorgeous El Fieri, and the pony car war smashes into a crash barrier. All that and more coming right up on Autoline Daily. This is Autoline Daily for May 24th of 2016. Well, there's a big shakeup at Fiat Chrysler, or should I say, Bigland shakeup. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Reed Bigland, who runs FCA's sales operation in the U.S. market and is chief executive of FCA Canada, was given yet another title, chief executive of Alfa Romeo and Maserati. Harold Wester, who had run Alfa and Maserati, is now the chief technology officer of FCA, but he already had that title. Sergio Marchion says it's time, quote, for our efforts to be directed towards the global commercial expansion of these two brands, and I can think of no one better than Reed to fulfill that mission. There's also a big shakeup in Maserati's product plans. Two years ago at the Geneva show, it unveiled the gorgeous Alfieri concept, with the promise it would go into production in two years. It was targeted to debut with a 3-liter twin-turbo V6 with over 400 horsepower and a 100 grand price tag to go up against the Porsche 911 and Mercedes AMG GT. But now Auto Forecast Solutions reports the Alfieri has been canceled. Harold Wester played a major role in developing that car, and it must have broke his heart to hear it was getting the axe. Meanwhile, Alfa Romeo is chasing the crossover craze with two new models. Auto Forecast says the long-delayed Alfa Stelvio SUV is confirmed to go into production this October at FCA's assembly plant in Mirafiori. It's reportedly based on the Alfa Giulia, and in late 2019, Alfa will launch another SUV at its plant in Pomilano Darko. And having two new crossovers in its lineup will sure help Reed Biglin's job of boosting sales at Alpha. Still to come, the Renault Twizy is heading to South Korea and three muscle cars only do so-so in crash tests. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. The IIHS just put three iconic pony cars through its small overlap test, and none of them passed. The small overlap test is where the front quarter of a vehicle is crashed into a rigid barrier at 40 miles per hour. It tested the V8 versions of the Camaro, Challenger, and Mustang. The Camaro did best and received a good score, while the Mustang got an acceptable rating and the Challenger was marginal. While these vehicles only make up a small percentage of the market, the data shows that sports cars have higher crash rates than other vehicles. Since it debuted in 2012, Renault has sold around 15,000 Twizzies. That's the company's small, weird-looking two-seat electric. It's currently sold in most of Western Europe, but now it will be available for lease in limited numbers in Canada, and it will also be exported to South Korea in the second half of this year. Wurz reports that Renault's Korean subsidiary, Renault Samsung, will sell the Twizy in that country. The company is also reportedly developing a similar-sized EV that will be available in both Korea and China. Renault Samsung also wants to develop a one-ton light commercial EV. It would be designed and developed in Korea with LG Chem supplying the batteries. The target range is 155 miles, but it could take up to four years to develop. Well, GMC just unveiled new trailering features for the Sierra. HD customers can now get a gooseneck fifth wheel package right from the factory for $350. The other feature is a new camera system that helps reduce blind spots. Three cameras come with the package. Two side view cameras are integrated into the mirror housings, while the third is designed to mount to the rear of the trailer. It gets hardwired to the trailer lights for power and wirelessly transmits video to the interior display screen. The system is available for some Sierra 1500 and HD models. Coming up next, John has something to say about why Europe is having so many problems with car companies cheating on emissions. 
Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Time for a little bit of AutoLine Insight. So now we're starting to see German transport officials going after Fiat and Opel for cheating on emissions testing. These officials are shocked, shocked to find that tailpipe emissions on the open road are far dirtier than they are in the emissions lab. Well, too bad those officials don't watch AutoLine. We've been saying for years that Europe's emission standards are easy breezy, and that goes for their fuel economy ratings too. On the face of it, European emission standards for cars look really tough. But the test procedures are so easy and the loopholes so loose, anyone can meet them. That's because it's European members of parliament who vote on how tough those standards should be. It's politicians, not scientists or regulators who set those standards. In fact, earlier this year, they voted to allow automakers to exceed NOx standards by 200%. Now there's a firestorm in Europe because testing shows that cars on the open road emit far more pollution than in the test lab. Well, of course they do because it's all quite legal. In fact, that's why Fiat told the German officials to go pound sand and Opel is claiming it didn't do anything illegal. Sure looks to me that the German transport ministry is desperate to prove that Volkswagen isn't the only cheater and it's trying to make it look like everyone's doing it. It's all about saving the Made in Germany brand. Yeah, I know Opel's a German brand, but it's owned by General Motors, and the German government trusts GM about as far as it can throw it. We'll see how this all turns out, but the root cause of the problem is allowing politicians to determine how tough those standards should be instead of leaving it to the scientists. Anyway, that's how I see it, and I welcome your input as well. And with that, we wrap up today's show. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.